What is up guys, Ron Perry here from Techno Buffalo, and we get the really unique opportunity to review all kinds of devices, phones, cars, computers, anything and everything in between. But they tend to be bigger flagship devices that you guys are really looking for. But there's a lot of devices that are smaller and on the cheaper scale that really do impact our lives on the day-to-day -day basis that we don't get to talk about. So that's what I wanted to do today, put together a video of a couple things that are cheaper on a smaller scale that really have impacted my life over the last couple of weeks and months with the help of our very own Mark the Burst Burst Diner. Let's go ahead and get started. So first off, we have the Syrup Genie Mini. It's a very small portable motion controller that basically gives you a motorized pan. You can put almost any camera on it, whether it be a full-size A7S Mark II the way we have, or a GoPro, or an iPhone, whatever it may be. The only thing to be aware of is that if you are putting a bigger camera on with a heavier lens, if you don't put it on a tripod, if you put it directly on a table or something, which it can pan there, it will tip over forward. So in most cases, unless you're using a really light camera, you will have to mount it on a tripod. So from unboxing, setup was extremely easy and the app was extremely intuitive. The UI is great. It's a very, very simple process to set this whole thing up. It connects through Bluetooth 4.0. It took me about a total of five minutes to get up and running. In terms of physical design, the product looks fine. It's very slick, very small, very portable. The only thing I don't like is the cork top and bottom. Purely a personal preference thing. I'm just not a huge fan of cork on products. A cool little feature that takes this to more of a pro level is the 2.5 millimeter camera control interface, which basically allows you to use the app as a built-in intervalometer rather than having to have one hanging off the camera or dangling off your rig. And I think that's really the key here. This is really a run and gun tool to me. It's fantastic for filmmakers who are looking to get into time-lapse without making a massive investment and to get some motion and some panning motion without having to build a whole rig out. It's also great for people who are on the go and who just want a full camera set up in their backpack but still want that higher production field rather than just having static time-lapse shots. Or even if you just want to do remote motorized pans so you don't rely on your own hands where there could be some fluctuations in speed and motion. All right, now that Ron is done boring you with camera equipment, just kidding, I think it's actually pretty cool too. I wanna to talk to you about one of the things that I think is neat, video games. You know I love them, but this one in particular has really caught my fancy. The Witness just drops you on an island and expects you to figure everything out. And if you know anything about game design, then you know that the best way for a player to have a good experience is not to hold their hand, is to help them understand what neural pathways they need to activate. All it does is leave you in a playground for you to figure out the puzzles on your own and what puzzles they really are. These puzzles force you to wipe out your predispositions about what the solution might be. They force you to stop thinking so visually and start thinking more mentally, really, to start thinking critically, to work on your deductive reasoning, to understand why something doesn't work here and does work here, forces you to look at your surroundings. And I really gotta tell you, go download it, pay for it, buy it, play it, you won't be disappointed. While we're talking about gaming, I gotta tell you about Discord. This is one of my favorite new platforms, period. If you're familiar with Slack, it's basically Slack, but specifically for gamers. Text chat, audio chat, if you're playing on a PC or a Mac, it's fantastic. There's apps for PC, Mac, Android, iOS, and it works so well. Let me tell you a little bit about how I use it. I set up a, a Discord server for my Destiny clan. Turns out we play a bunch of other games too, so we set up multiple channels for each other to talk to each other so we're not bothering the people who only play one game and not another. We use it to talk about news and stuff that comes out, but we also use it for scheduling. The other really nice thing is, as I mentioned, they have mobile apps too. So instead of using whatever it is that you use to actually talk to people in your lives, whether it's Hangouts or SMS or Group SMS or, or in this case, Skype, if you're a gamer, Discord makes that so, so much easier and their apps are phenomenal. And last but definitely not least is the unique Q500 4K drone. Now this is one of the most affordable drones on the market that in my opinion still gets the job done. It comes in somewhere between $900 to $1,000 depending on what retailer you buy it from and it is an absolutely feature packed drone. So for starters one of my favorite thing about this drone is that everything is in the remote so you don't have a separate screen on your iOS device like you do from DJI. You don't have to plug anything in. The screen is built right right in to the remote controller. It has a 4K camera on a three axis gimbal that can also shoot various frame rates at 1080p and will shoot up to 12 megapixel photos. 
At first, given the price point, I really wasn't expecting much, but on first flight, there were a couple things I noted. The motors are a little bit low power, but I think this is a fantastic drone. With low power motors, you would think that's a downside. Fighting wind and stuff is harder, but the benefit is that it flies much, much smoother. It's very approachable for someone who doesn't fly too many drones, that someone would be me. We compared it to our 3DR Iris Plus drone, which we tested a couple months ago. And overall, the flying experience was just way smoother. The gimbal combined with the slower speeds and the weaker motors, while you would think it would be worse, actually allowed us to get much smoother shots. And I think that's the key. You gotta remember, if you're filming with drones, speed is not the key. The key is smooth flying, and the Unique has this in spades. So those are a few products that have really sort of impacted and changed our lives that are on the lower budget of things or that you may not have heard of that have flown under the radar. I'm very curious to hear what you guys like, what you guys have been using, whether it be apps, budget phones, or anything in between. Let us know in the comments down below. We're very curious to hear. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Hit subscribe for more awesome content like this, and I will see you guys in the next one.